Hey guys, it's Hussein again from ABI Engineering. In the previous couple of videos, we learned how to determine the indoor and outdoor design conditions for heating system design. And now, the time has come for these design conditions to serve their higher purpose, designing an adequate and practical heating system that will comfort us when winter comes. This video will be the introduction and the beginning of a series that will help us in learning how to design an efficient and capable residential heating system that will meet our building needs. Let's first go back to our old school days when we were young and we had just started learning about the Earth's seasons. They taught us that it is because of the Earth's tilt, 23.5 degrees on average, that we experience these seasons. The tilt causes certain places on our planet, depending on which hemisphere one considers, to experience shorter days and longer nights, which in turn means shorter sun exposure. And the opposite happens in the other hemisphere. The sun is our only natural heating source. Therefore, if some places are exposed to this heat source for less amounts of time, the overall temperature of these places will drop, which we experience as the winter season. Imagine heating one cup of water in a microwave for two minutes and another for three minutes. Which one will come out colder? Well, if you chose this one, then you were right. So that is why temperatures in the winter season drop to low values and we begin to feel the cold and harsh sensation. You see, our bodies feel comfortable at a specific range of temperature and humidity values, according to what we are doing and what we are wearing. Somewhere in the 20s are most temperature values and somewhere between 30% and 60% are most of the humidity ones. You can check the previous videos for exact calculations. So as the conditions move away from this range, we start to feel uncomfortable. It is a way that our body uses to alarm us of potential harm if the severity increases. So the solution is easy, one might say. Let's keep our indoor house conditions at a specific temperature and humidity at which we feel comfortable. Well, you see, it's not that simple. There's this thing. They call it the second law of thermodynamics. Yeah, well, it ruins everything. Let's explain why by considering this little example. Imagine a steel rod 2 cm in diameter and 50 cm in length. Initially, the rod is at a constant temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. We then bring an ice bucket and drop one of the ends of this rod quickly in the ice bucket. The rod's temperature at that location drops to, let's say, minus 2 degrees Celsius. And then we remove the rod back out of the bucket. At this point, you have one side at a temperature of minus 2 degrees Celsius and the other at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Now we leave the rod to lie in space, but every couple of minutes we measure the temperature at both extremities. We record that as time passes, the temperature of the colder part starts to increase and the temperature of the hotter part starts to decrease. This continues until the rod is back at a constant median temperature of 9 degrees Celsius across its whole body. This is the second law of thermodynamics in action. Energy tends to naturally flow from higher temperature to lower ones as it did in this example, from the hot end to the cold end. Now let's do the same for a house in the winter season. Consider this house, which is at an indoor temperature of 23 degrees Celsius and a humidity of 40%. The owners are enjoying their time in their thermally comfortable house. Suddenly, the outdoor air temperature drops to minus 10 degrees Celsius and it's winter. According to the second law of thermodynamics, heat will have to flow from the hotter body to the cooler body. Thus, the indoor air will start to lose heat energy to the outdoor at a fast rate. As the indoor air loses energy without being replaced, its temperature starts to drop. The problem is that the indoor air volume is very small relative to the outside air. Therefore, the outside air will continue to take the house's energy until the indoor temperature is similar to the outdoor temperature, which does not change measurably like the previous example. 
and unless you dream of being a human popsicle, it is not a pleasant feeling. Imagine, as shown in this setting, that an indoor space contains a constant number of energy units that give the indoor air its temperature. The flow of thermal energy to the outside of the house is the problem that is causing the temperature to drop. So if there is a way to replace this energy by the same amount, then the temperature in the room will remain at comfort temperature and the problem would be solved. Enter heating system. This is how the heating system keeps us comfortable during the harsh winter times. In simple words, it uses a certain form of source energy, such as chemical or electrical, then through a transfer mechanism converts it into thermal energy, then dumps it inside the house, thus replacing the energy that is being transferred from inside to the outside air due to the difference in temperature. Now, the previous example, I have discussed dB temperature only, or dry bulb temperatures only. But the other important factor is humidity. Humidity values in the winter are low. Although outdoor relative humidity may be acceptable due to low temperatures, but the absolute humidity which describes the actual amount of moisture in the air is low. Consider this schematic which simplifies our model for explanatory purposes. When outside air enters the building space and goes through some sort of heating element, the temperature of this air increases, but the absolute humidity does not change since no moisture has been added or extracted. Let's see what actually happens on a psychrometric chart. Let's say that the outside air is at this point of temperature of 4 degrees Celsius and a humidity ratio of 2 grams per kilogram and a relative humidity of 40%. The outdoor air is heated by the heating system without adding or removing any water content from the air. Therefore, the air undergoes sensible heating. A sensible heating process on the psychrometric chart would look like this. The moisture content which is on the y-axis does not undergo any change, only dry bulb temperature. The air is now warm the way we intended it to be at 22 degrees Celsius and the humidity is still the same at 2 grams per kilogram. But the relative humidity dropped from 40% to about 12%. That is because warmer air has the ability to carry more water. And since no water was added relative to the max ability of the air to carry water, the humidity dropped. Now we as humans feel the effect of relative humidity the most. Why is that? Well, because relative humidity determines the ability of the air to take in moisture from other bodies. To explain the concept a bit more, imagine two air volumes, one larger than the other, with each containing one unit of water vapor. Since they have the same amount of water, their absolute humidity values are the same. On the other hand, volume B has place for plenty of more water units, therefore it is less relatively humid. The less relatively humid the air is, the more moisture it can withdraw from our bodies and other surroundings. To show how low relative humidity affects us, consider the following examples. Very low humidity can cause us humans dryness in our eyes, and dryness in our throats, and in both cases, this is due to the evaporation of the water found in them, which makes us feel uncomfortable physically, although not thermally. Also, it can have a damaging effect on other organic bodies in our house, which contain water, such as wooden furniture and flooring. That is why in the winter season, a humidification element might be added to the heating system in order to achieve the needed comfortable humidity values. Let's, so, let's show this again on the psychrometric chart. In the shown model, we change point 2 from representing the indoor air to representing the air before the humidifier, and we assign point 3 for the new indoor air.
The humidifier humidifies the air theoretically at a constant temperature to the same temperature of 22 degrees Celsius and a relative humidity of 50%. In the summer, on the other hand, relative humidity affects our body's evaporative cooling performance via sweating, which we will discuss in later videos. So things are starting to make sense. It all starts with the Earth's tilt. The silt creates less sun exposure in parts of the earth. Less exposure leads to lower temperatures. Lower temperatures and the second law of thermodynamics force heat loss from our house to the surrounding colder environment. Heat loss from the indoor air results in a drop in indoor air temperature. Due to the temperature drop, we begin to feel cold and uncomfortable. We use a heating system to replace the heat loss and maintain comfortable temperatures. Heating the indoor air causes indoor relative humidity to drop, so we add the humidification element to the heating system to maintain the needed humidity values. So for now, we're done with the introduction for heating system design, so make sure to see my next video where we discuss the different elements of the heating system. As always, thank you all for your time. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hussein, out.